Okay, so before we get rolling on video number four, um, looking back when we created this guy back in video two, I do realize that there was something I forgot to do that I did mention, and that was the yellow dots in the eyes. So sorry about that, left that out, didn't mean to, um, but we'll take care of that here really quick. So just grab you any you know thin paintbrush, toothpick, Q-tip, anything just with a tip because we're not gonna be very big with these, with these guys on the pupils here. Just get you a little bit on the end of your brush. We're gonna go right in the center of those glossy eyeballs. And that's really all there is to it, and nothing major. Uh, again, but it does add that extra sense of realism and depth to the work. Uh, so, you know, they're not just black eyes now. Now they actually have some kind of personality in there. Um, but that's it. I wanted to catch up and make sure that I, I did include that since I did forget. But uh, moving on here. So before we can actually get to the assembly of the frame with the clothing and the addition of the head and the neck, we actually have to build that neck piece now. Now in video three, we talked about building this neck stem, right? Four and a half inches, two inches, or two and a half, however, however close you want to make it, as long as it fits snugly into that neck piece. What's got to happen, you know, once we built this skull, we probably could have done the hole back at that time, but not really a big deal because like I said, we have to build this out. And you remember I mentioned that we're going to build it with painter's plastic. We're going to make the neck look meaty. So if you turn that head over, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a one inch hole into this foam. However, we're not going to go straight into the back of the head. Let me get this so you can see it. If I'm holding this where the head is looking straight, we do not want to go straight because when you insert that neck stem straight and you go to insert it, what's going to happen? He's going to be looking straight up at the sky and that's not what we want. So tilt him forward. You got to imagine this neck piece going straight up into his head. So in actuality, it kind of goes up at a 45 degree angle. So when you turn that head over, that's exactly what you're going to have to do with your drill. Again, grab your drill with a one inch bit, paddle bit, wood bit, whatever you want. Get it right pretty much in the center of the skull. Go ahead and start that drill just a little bit. Just enough to catch it. Okay, now you want to angle that. And start taking it up into that head at an angle. And really all you need is the depth of that bit, nothing more. Go ahead and pull it out. foam out of there. This will be a little bit messy, so just kind of have something to catch all the residual foam in. Okay, so what you're left with is that one inch hole, right? Okay, and again, this hole goes up at an angle, not straight in the back, so that if you get this and dry fit it, put that in there. You can see how it sits now. So when we insert this into the PVC body, which is actually, you know, that T is at a 45 degree angle. He's gonna be up slightly like this, not like this, not like that. We want him just around this angle right here. So let's take a look at that right there. <clears throat> Again, so you can see he's in there at an angle. What we're gonna do at this point, we're going to hot glue this right around here. We're gonna go in with some 3M spray and some strips of painter plastic we're gonna to start to layer the bottom of this, and that's why I didn't paint this, because I knew this was gonna get covered. However, when we're done, after we layer it, burn it, layer it, burn it with plastic, build that neck up, we're gonna get the whole thing and hit it with latex. Mask latex again, that's our go-to. And once that's all done, we're gonna flip this guy over, we're gonna start spot checking him with black spray paint, he's gonna have the same color palette as his head, so the whole piece will blend. And if I'm moving too quick, let me know. Shoot me a line, say, hey, Paul, I need you to slow down. I'm just kind of excited because this is kind of the fun part here. Okay, so we are ready now to apply the hot glue around this neck stem and secure this piece before we start applying the uh, plastic and, and hitting it with a heat gun and wrapping it and building up that neck. Okay, so again, we have our neck piece in there. We got our heat gun ready to go. And all we want to do is go around that entire neck stem. Yeah, you want to, you know, don't be shy to use a lot of glue because you don't want this thing to move. So just go all around that neck. And once I do that, I like to let that start to cure just a little bit. Just blow on it. Go ahead and start adding some more. And I usually go around this next stem 
two to three times, like I said, just to make sure that I've got a good adhesion between that stem and that foam so that that piece doesn't move once it, uh, once it dries. And my third pass. And, you know, like I said, I'll just, I'll just build up around all the glue that I've already put on there just to keep building it up. All right, and that should be good. Okay, now while that is sitting there and drying just a bit more, let's talk about the, uh, the plastic. So when I build this up with painter's plastic, in case some of you aren't familiar with this, um, if you have a Home Depot, if you have a Lowe's or any other uh, home shop, it's nothing more than, than drop cloth is all it is, painter's plastic drop cloth. Um, seven mil is usually what I use only because it's got just that right thickness. Uh, if you go with the five mil or three, it'll just tear on you like nothing. So I wouldn't recommend it. And so when you're ready, you know, kind of cut it in strips. Um, what I've done is gone ahead and, and pre-made some of these strips. Now these are probably about four feet long, um, which is fine because we're going to spray this with adhesive. We're going to start to wrap it and just build layer upon layer upon layer. So... Here we go, let's get some 3M spray. And what I like to do first, before I start wrapping that neck, I like to cover this entire bottom so that it looks, you know, a little bit meaty. So go ahead and just spray the bottom of the foam skull. Don't be afraid about getting it on the stem. Okay, and once you got that there, I mean, you literally can just place it. So there's no right or wrong reason because we're going to hit it with heat gun. It's going to melt it anyway. But all we're trying to do is, is build a little bit of the base layer. And you're probably thinking, well, can't you just use cotton? Uh, you can, but like I said, we're trying to build this up. So I want, you know, some actual meat to this thing. Um, cotton would take forever to get to that kind of thickness. All right. Like I said, it's not rocket science. There is no right or wrong way to do this. It's simply hit that thing with glue, get the plastic on there how you can, and then get your heat gun. Now go ahead and make sure your hair is out of the way because remember I said it will burn your hair. So go ahead and put it on a high setting. And we're just gonna hit that plastic till it starts to melt. Going all the way around it. Okay, so that is good right there. And as you can see, it melted some of that plastic. Be careful, this is a little hot and tacky, um, but it cools off pretty quick. So you wanna get that right there. That's pr a pretty much of a good base coat that we need. So from here, I'm gonna start wrapping around this neck piece. Now, the farthest we wanna go to is gonna be right up in here. You don't wanna get onto this because this is gonna be attached to the actual PVC neck body. So we don't wanna hinder this in any way and get in the way of that. So just feel free to stop about, probably about an inch or half an inch right up to the edge of that there. So go ahead and hit it with some more glue. And then I'm gonna start to wrap. use glue to, to keep it down okay let's go ahead and hit that with a heat gun now Okay, so we've got a good base going. So you can see how that's starting to act up there. So we're gonna build down now. We wanna connect this neck to the bottom of the head and just kind of bring it out. So let's just spray it again. Get you another strip of plastic. And just start at the base and just keep wrapping. Like 
back it down, hit it with the heat gun again. Okay, so we are on our way. One thing before we go any further, now I know in video three on the frame assembly, I specifically said do not paint, do not do anything with joints that have to move. So while you're spraying this, be extra cautious not to get glue on this because you won't get it off. Like I said, it'll piss you off. You'll go in there to turn it, it'll get stuck, and you're gonna start with a new piece. Don't wanna do that because why? You've already got this thing built into the skull. You'd have to take this whole thing apart in order to do it if you ended up gluing this piece in here um, like you should have. So let's keep building up on this. Stay away from this with the glue. So you're just spot checking, you're not going crazy, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Grab another piece of plastic. And just start around here. And once you get to this point and it starts getting meaty, you can go crazy with it and Make it as meaty as you want at that point. Because the more you hit it with the hot glue or with the heat gun, it's gonna look super real as it starts to melt and become skin-like. You know, and if some of these spots, if you want to hit it with a heat gun and let that plastic just disintegrate and pull apart or it opens up and becomes very stringy, that's cool too because once we apply the latex and then paint it, it's going to look really cool. All right. So for our demonstration purposes, I think I'm going to stop there just to give you an idea of where we're at now. Let's pull this hair back down. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, so we've got the head. We've got the meaty neck built up. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and get the latex out. We're gonna paint all that with latex. A few layers between heating layer, heating layer, just like we did the head. Okay, so let's put this to the side. Let's get our latex cup ready and, and brush, and we're going to go to town here. So again, get your latex ready, get just a little cup of it. You want to grab another chipping brush, and what you're going to do is completely, completely cover all of that plastic skin that we just put on with latex. Do one good layer, hit it with the heat gun, let's get that layer dry. We're going to go back over it again, heat gun, one more layer, dry. Okay, so let's go to that real quick. I'm gonna do a time lapse just so we can get through this. Okay, so our neck at this point is starting to look pretty damn good. He's got the meatiness that I want. He's got the texture that I want. So what our next step is going to be is to frost the back of this guy black, just like we did the skull initially, right? We don't wanna overdo it. We just wanna give it some hues of black um, because what's gonna happen after that is we're gonna come in here, hit it with spray, and then we're gonna spot check it with cotton and start to blend some more of that in to give it just a little bit more meatiness, a little bit more realism uh, before we do a final paint over and then dabbing with some stain. So let's turn this guy over. Let's hit the get the uh, black flat spray paint again. Again, we're not going to overdo it. And again, we're not gonna do what? We are not gonna paint this stem right here because we need that to rotate. Just keep that in mind. All right, let's start hitting this.
And you know what? Actually, you know, while I'm thinking about it, um, again, forgive me, I, I think of these things as I'm doing it, and I know better because I should just tell you, one good method to avoid painting this or getting glue on this before you start anything, again, I should have said this in the very beginning, let's cover this up with either some painter's tape, uh, duct tape, Okay, so as you can see, he's now pretty much got the same color palette as the rest of his head. Almost, not fully, but, but halfway there. Um, again, we're gonna come in here with some more adhesive, some cotton, latex that, we'll go over it again with the paint, and then we'll start to use the stain. So get that spray adhesive. Go ahead and spray this guy. Just some of the areas down here. You don't need a whole lot. Go ahead and get your cotton ball, and then we're gonna start to just dab that cotton like we did on the skull initially. Like I said, we don't need to go crazy. We're just simply trying to, to blend that in from where the plastic meets the skull. Uh, and, and like I said, just to give it an extra sense of uh, additional skin layers. Okay, so you've got trace amounts of cotton all around here. Grab that chipping brush. Again, we're just gonna dab it. Start going over that cotton. And, and the cool thing about going back over this with the latex once you've already painted it Remember, as I said before, when you start to dry that latex, it cures, it cures translucently, especially if it's a thin layer, and that enables that base color to start coming through. All right, so get the heat gun. Go over the whole thing, and again, it won't take that long because all we did was dab on just a little bit of latex, not a whole lot. Okay, and that takes him out of his tacky state. So, what we want to go ahead and do at this point go ahead and get your flat black once again. Let's go ahead and just lightly frost back over some of those pieces. Now sometimes right under the jaw, I'll tend to make it a little bit darker just because you're trying to create some of that natural looking shadow. And maybe around the base of the hairline, you can darken it just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna flip him back over, pull his chin straps back down, put his hair back down. He's looking like a hot mess right now, but he'll look pretty cool once we get him all straightened out. Okay, so we've got our head, um, and as you can see, you know, now he's kind of has the meaty neck down here to go with it, so it's not just straight PVC that you're gonna be seeing. And then once we connect this, um, we're gonna be building a chest plate for that frame that we uh, built in the last video, so that when we connect these two, the meaty neck is meeting up with the, with the meaty chest plate, and it's gonna look pretty cool. All right. 
I'm just trying to get him all straightened out and get the kinks worked back out of him since we had his hair flipped upside down. All in all, I'm pretty impressed with the way he came out. Uh, you know, for what it is, <laughs> a two-part rigid foam skull, he came out pretty damn cool, I think. Uh, you know, and we didn't really spend a whole lot of time on him. If you stop and think about it, and you put this video together uh, on part two when we created him, I mean, that wasn't even more than an hour that it took to get this guy done. So once you do him over and over and over, you can get these guys done in a matter of like 30 minutes. Swear to you, it's you, I promise that you can. Uh, like I said, just keep running through it, keep doing the motions, get your processes down. Uh, eventually, you'll be able to find something that works for you and you can streamline that even further. Uh, but this is what we end up with, right? Skull, meaty neck. Uh, the only thing left to do now for this guy is to go ahead and get the chest plate going uh, so that we can attach it to that frame body.